Donald Trump in this election said nine times, nine times that he's going against Barack Obama. Or that he, he, well, he, has, because, he because stumbles too. He's intimating that have, Barack Obama is behind the decision making of the Biden White yeah, House. Yeah, I don't think anybody I mean, misunderstood. Trump they started as political gaffes, but now they've turned into major campaign issues that require deep analysis and maybe even congressional testimony. With two elderly candidates, each side is trying to find new ways to defend their memory and awareness slips as well as their physical ones. And Kayleigh McEnany, who used to work for Trump, might want to retract that last attempt because Donald definitely has Obama on his subconscious a lot. As you know, crooked Joe Biden and the radical left thugs who have weaponized law enforcement to arrest their leading political opponent, and leading by a lot, including Obama. It was, I'll tell you what, you take a look at Obama and take a look at some of the things that he's done. This is the same thing. The country is very divided. And we did with Obama. We won an election that everyone said couldn't be won. We beat Hillary Clinton. Now, you know, I used to, I used to call her crooked Hillary. Maybe Trump doesn't know that he's not running against Obama. Or, or maybe he's obsessed with trying to live up to the popularity that Obama had while he was in office. Whatever the case may be, defenders may point out that he immediately caught himself when the wrong name flew out of his mouth there. So at least his mind is still there. It was that time but it's not every time. And then I hear that they like Obama better. They should like Obama better. You know why? Because he didn't ask for anything. We were like the stupid country of the world, and we're not going to be the stupid country of the world any longer. We're not going to be. Got bad under, under this guy. So he now wants to send them 50, 60 billion dollars. Even before special counsel Robert Hur released his report on President Biden's handling of classified documents that depicted a forgetful old guy that failed to protect highly sensitive information, the conservative narrative about Biden's abilities was one of their main focal points. So now that there's some documented meat behind those accusations, it's time for dueling moments of cognitive decline. The country's finished. I don't... In what regard? Uh, I think it's not going to be able to function. I think it's, look at even things like supply chains, things we never even heard about. You never heard that term. He's right. No one has ever heard of the term supply chain. But the focus of this moment for Trump is that he got supply chain confused with change. So he must be in decline. But in reality, maybe we should be alarmed that the guy said he's never heard of the term supply chain until the pandemic disrupted many industries that rely on others' materials and stability to operate. So, like the ultra-team-oriented country that we are, we've huddled into our corners and are focused on the senior moments rather than the signs of incompetence. So, as long as no one has to exhibit their ability to effectively lead the country, our candidates can take the lazy route and focus on who's in cognitive decline rather than who's uninterested in doing the job. Always roll out the so-called experts with talking points, but you should just ignore them. Here's the truth. No trained lawyer on earth believes that that Buffalo head guy and the boys, or Donald Trump speaking at the Ellipse, were engaged in a serious effort to overthrow the government of the United States. No one believes that. When your guy can't get a win in court in front of trained lawyers and judges, the only card you have left is to just dismiss all of that reality and simply claim that no one serious believes the things that you believe. No one believes that. And depending on the hearing, court case, or cable news interview, Trump's story about January 6th has shifted from who's responsible to who wanted it to happen multiple times. For an insurrection, there needs to be an organized, concerted effort to overthrow the government of the United States through violence. And this and so riot the point that is that a chaotic effort to overthrow the government is not an insurrection? No, we didn't concede that it's an effort to overthrow the government either, Justice Jackson. Right? None of these criteria were met. This was a riot. It was not an insurrection. The events were shameful, criminal, violent, all of those things, but it did not qualify as insurrection as that term is used in Section 3. Even the energy of the day is a fluid concept for conservatives that simply can't acknowledge that they empowered a power-hungry, aspiring autocrat. Because again, if the day was shameful, criminal, and violent, why did the guy that suddenly wants to distance himself from his supporters' shameful, criminal, and violent actions on his behalf, why did he praise them after it happened? I am inclined to uh, pardon many of them. I can't say for every single one, because a couple of them, probably, they got out of control. They were there with love in their heart. That was an unbelievable, and it was a beautiful day. That's how manipulating reality works, especially after submitting so many followers' belief that one guy is all-powerful and all-knowing. You can then call the foot soldiers Antifa and BLM and then change it later. You can deny insurrection for years, all the way up until it's necessary to call it one for the sake of blaming it on your political opponents. And the one thing I'll say is they kept saying about what I said right after the insurrection. 
I think it was an insurrection caused by Nancy Pelosi. So while the narrative keeps his voters guessing where their position will be next week, there's always opportunistic actors waiting in the wings to prove their dedication to his cause. You would be willing to serve in a Trump administration. Had you been vice president on January 6, 2021, what would you have done? I stood up for the Constitution. I believe no, it was what an would you have done if you were vice president? Okay. I would not have done what Mike Pence did. I don't think that was the right approach. I specifically uh, stand by what I said on the House floor, and uh, I stand by my statement, which was there so was you unconstitutional the overreach. Votes. There was unconstitutional unconst overreach in states like Pennsylvania, and uh, I think it's very important that we continue to stand up for the Constitution and have legal and secure elections, which we did not have in 2020. And m the tens of millions of Americans agree with me, Caitlin. Well, at least Stefanik hid with her congressional colleagues behind barriers and under seats, hoping that she wouldn't be murdered by anyone mistaking her for a Democrat. But three years later, she's seen the January 6th committee's evidence of Trump angrily denying any accountability for his incitement of violence or acknowledgement of losing and still vows to assist him in his lies. These are the qualifications for a guy looking for yes men, but they're actually warning signs to the rest of the country. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack yesterday and to those who broke the law you will pay. You do not represent our movement. You do not represent our country. And if you broke the law, you can't say that. I'm not gonna, you, I already said you will pay. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defied the seat of dust. It's defiled, right? See, I can't see it very well. Okay, I'll, I'll do this. I'm gonna do this. Let's go. But this election is now over. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay?